In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. This morning we come to pray to God our Father. We're asked to remember Marissa Provido, a Thanksgiving Mass, and also a Thanksgiving Mass for Luisa Aguilas. Also in our prayer we pray for the sick, especially those affected by coronavirus, and we'll have the votive Mass of for the sick people in the world today. To prepare ourselves now, we acknowledge we do sin at times. We ask for God's forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sins and divisions. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, eternal health of believers, hear our prayers for your servants who are sick. Grant them, we implore you, your merciful help, so that with their health restored, they may give you thanks in the midst of your church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Shepherds, the Lord says this, Trouble for the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Shepherds ought to feed their flock, yet You have fed on milk. You have dressed yourselves in wool. You have sacrificed the fattest sheep, but failed to feed the flock. You have failed to make weak sheep strong, or care for the sick ones, or bandage the wounded ones. You have failed to bring back strays, or look for the lost. On the contrary, you have ruled them cruelly and violently. For lack of a shepherd, they have scattered to become the prey of any wild animal. They have scattered far. My flock is straying this way and that, on mountains and on high hills. My flock has been scattered all over the country. No one bothers about them, and no one looks for them. Well then, shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, I swear it, it is the Lord who speaks. Since my flock has been looted, and for lack of a shepherd is now the prey of any wild animal, since my shepherds have stopped bothering about my flock, since my shepherds feed themselves rather than my flock, in view of all these, shepherds hear the word of the Lord. The Lord says this, I am going to call the shepherds to account. I am going to take my flock back from them, and I shall not allow them to feed my flock. In this way, the shepherds will stop feeding themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths. They will not prey on them anymore. For the Lord says this, I am going to look after my flock myself and keep all of it in view. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, our response, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With this, you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely, goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Please stand to welcome the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of God is living and active. It probes the thoughts and motives of our heart. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and sent them to his vineyard. Going out at about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you go to my vineyard too, and I will give you a fair wage. So they went. At about the sixth hour, and again at about the ninth hour, he went out and did the same. Then at about the eleventh hour, he went out and found more men standing round, and he said to them, why have you been standing here idle all day? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You go into my vineyard too. In the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his bailiff, Call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first. So those who were hired at about the eleventh hour came forward and received one denarius each. When the first came, they expected to get more, but they too received one denarius each. They took it, but grumbled at the landowner. The men who came last, they said, have done only one hour, and you have treated them the same as us. Though we have done a heavy day's work in all the heat. He answered one of them and said, My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do that? I like have I no right to do what I like with my own? Why be envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Like Jeremiah. Ezekiel uses the image of the king as shepherd to challenge the leaders of God's people. Now we can look at this passage and say it has no application to us, but that would be avoiding the question, because we're all called to be leaders in the sense we're called to be disciples of Jesus in our lives. So the challenge that's put out by Ezekiel, or through Ezekiel, is one we need to take seriously. The point he's making is that it is too easy to give less than your best with minimal supervision. In other words, while the boss is away or while we think we are safe and nobody's seeing us or God's not particularly interested in what we are doing. We need to ask ourselves, 
What are the distractions in our lives that prevent us from being the servants and the leaders we are supposed to be? Look, the reality is people are not sheep. Each of us has personal responsibility for our lives. Our relationship with each other is going to be two-way as well. So before complaining about the deficiencies of the people around about us, we need to ask, what can we do to assist them? Praying for each other daily is important, but we can help in many other ways. We all have to help each other so as to enable every person to carry out their distinctive roles that God has given to them. You know, in this regard, as a priest, I often wonder why people do not make the most of the opportunities to grow, such as the Sacrament of Reconciliation, the opportunities to deepen our faith in prayer and in faith education programs. Then we come to our Gospel today. Jesus makes it clear that the parable is about the Kingdom of Heaven and who enters it. He reinforces what he told us yesterday about the first being last and the last being first. In fact, we can hear echoes of the story of the prodigal son. The eldest son resented his father's kindness to his repentant brother. And Jesus tells us that God's generosity is the same to everyone, whether they have worked for the kingdom for a long time or they are the last of the latecomers. Now even the apostles themselves had difficulty grasping this. Remember James and John. They caused a great deal of resentment when they asked for privileged positions on either side of Jesus. Now the kingdom is about God's goodness at work in us. We do have to work and plan for the future and yet we must always desire only what God desires. You know, in our church we want every person to be hired, to feel included, to be feel welcome, to know they have a contribution to make. Perhaps some people are stood by idle because they don't feel welcome, they don't seem to find a way to be involved. Perhaps no one has asked them or hired them. Perhaps we ourselves prefer to keep at a distance. Whatever the reasons for not being involved, God is always offering us a genuine invitation to join him in making his kingdom present among us. There is always something that each and every one of us can do to take the Ignatian idea that it's work always as though everything depends upon us, but at the same time, pray as though it all depends upon God, because in the final analysis, it actually does. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We stand for a prayer of the faithful. The Lord is calling us to the work of prayer and desires us to open our hearts to him. We pray for the grace not to be envious of others, but to rejoice in the gifts that God gives to them. Lord, hear us. We pray that those who do voluntary work in our church and in this parish may do so selflessly and with generosity of spirit. Lord, hear us. We pray that in doing God's will, we do not count the cost, but be happy simply to be his instruments. Lord, hear us. We pray for our own needs and those of our brothers and sisters. We pray for all those who are ill, especially those affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who have died. We also remember in prayer the families who have suffered or lost loved ones during the coronavirus. Lord, hear us. Father, you love us with a love which is beyond all we could ever hope for or imagine. You are attentive to every need before ever we know those needs ourselves. Look upon us, your children, and look kindly upon us as we call upon you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Now let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Since the moments of our life unfold, O oh God, according to your good pleasure, receive the prayers and sacrificial offerings by which we implore your mercy for our brothers and sisters who are ill, that having been anxious for them in their danger, we may rejoice at their recovery of health. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll pray the preface of weekdays number five, Eucharistic prayer number two. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Andrew and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. the prayer of spiritual communion for those unable to be with us physically. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you, Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Today you are to take the body of our Lord Jesus Christ to our brothers and sisters who are unable to be with us. We ask you to give to them our greetings and our love, read the scriptures to them, pray with them, and minister to them this most precious sacrament. I would ask you to do the cleansing of the seats at the conclusion of Mass. So now let us pray. O God, only support of our human weakness, show the power of your protection over your servants who are sick, that sustained by your merciful help, they may be restored to your holy church in good health. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and glorify God in your daily lives. Amen.